Uh, guys, let me know if you can hear me. I think I should be fine. Hopefully, guys, hopefully everybody can hear me. Uh, let me introduce myself first. My name is Alex, uh, and I'm a lead blockchain developer at Mover. Uh, Mover is the first bridge, liquidity bridge, that's going to connect Aptos uh, with both EVM and non-EVM chains. And today we're going to talk about um, one of the technologies that um, we use at Mover, um, which is layer zero cross-chain messaging. Um, yeah, so before we start, um, I mean, I guess everybody has um, nowadays, I mean, realized that cross-chain plays a huge role in development of uh, DeFi space, um, NFT space, and generally it's one of the most trending topics um, that today uh, basically affects the whole ecosystem, the whole crypto ecosystem. And that's why um, it's very important for any developer uh, who wants to be um, up to date, stay relevant, um, know about the basics of, at least the basics of the cross-chain interaction, uh, what are the technologies there and what are the best technologies um, and what can they give to your uh, protocols, to your applications that you develop. And today we're going to look at layer zero, which we believe in Mover is one of the uh, most solid cross-chain protocols. And we're going to see how um, it can be used to go cross-chain on Aptos. So basically, how do, we, how do we connect Aptos with other um, chains and make a whole plethora of new applications, cross-chain applications, um, viable and possible? OK, so um, first of all, um, let's quickly, um, let me quickly introduce a bit more um, what we do as a mover. So, uh, you know, what we come, why, why we um, arrived uh, at this point, and why we are using um, why we are using layer zero. Uh, so, as I said, Mover is a bridge, and our goal uh, is to connect um, Move ecosystem, which is currently represented by two most uh, dynamically evolving and growing um, blockchains, um, which are Aptis and Sui. And our goal is to connect them to the rest of the crypto sphere. Before that, before moving to Aptos and Sui, we had quite a lot of experience with the similar languages, similar uh, to move. Um, and this kind of resource-oriented, safe, strictly type checked style of development was something that we immediately realized we love from the tech side of things, and then we learned about Aptis and Sui, we immediately thought that, okay, this is something that we want to definitely to be part of. Um, as a protocol, as an application level protocol, our uh, first and foremost goal is to bring popular tokens, bring uh, commonly used tokens and liquidity uh, to Aptis and Sui. So basically what we plan to uh, do is from day one, we want to make sure that um, DeFi ecosystem on Aptos has uh, access to all the major tokens such as USDT, USDC, um, ETH, um, Bitcoin, and probably a bunch more. On the other hand, what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that we can bridge the liquidity um, from Aptos and Sui uh, basically, uh, mostly, it will be their native tokens to other chains. Uh, so it will both benefit Aptos and Sui ecosystems, and at the same time, um, the rest of the DeFi space uh, can have access and can utilize native tokens on Aptos, of Aptos and Sui. So that's like our motivation for the project that we started, and uh, let's dive a bit deeper into what's going, what we're going to talk about today. So um, after this short introduction, 
Um, we're going to talk about layer zero, about various um, architectures, various approaches to uh, cross-chain messaging. We're going to um, take a look at our approach, as well as um, I'm going to show you a bit of the code. So um, as of now, um, layer zero um, hasn't yet published um, the mover code officially, um, like it's not available. Um, but I'm going to give you a sneak peek of something that we um, use because we participate in the closed, um, uh, let's say, beta program, you can say, you can call it like this. Uh, and we have early access to the technology that Layer Zero develops. So uh, today we're going to take a look at the uh, very simple move contracts that are cross-chain enabled thanks to Layer Zero. And at the end, obviously, if there are any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Okay, so um, before we move on, um, just a bit of background um, on like why uh, bridging and more general cross-chain messaging is important and uh, how does it come into the larger picture. So um, the first thing that obviously to like most of the um, even the, the beginners in crypto space is that uh, blockchains are silos. They are isolated from each other um, and they all live in their own world. Um, so bridges basically are a solution to this um, isolation. Bridges connect blockchains and enable um, two basic um, things. First, it's liquidity transfer, so value transfer, uh, is what we call token bridges. It's probably um, one of the most common applications. That's why um, whenever somebody hears the term bridge, the first thing that comes to mind is that, okay, you take coins from one blockchain and move them to the other blockchain. So probably most of the protocols um, that you have seen or interacted with are uh, liquidity or token bridges. But apart from just bridging uh, tokens, um, be it fungible or non-fungible tokens, uh, there is a larger task, which is generic cross-chain messaging. So you can imagine that apart from moving liquidity, um, one can think of building cross-chain applications. So when you have a contract uh, on one chain, calling the contract on the other chain, getting back the result, uh, and basically they operate as if they were mostly on one blockchain. So that's a more general task than just bridging the liquidity uh, itself. And layer zero, um, the topic of our today's workshop basically aims at solving the generic cross-chain messaging uh, problem. So, um, talking about the bridges, so if we, if we look at the bridges uh, itself and um, at the liquidity and token um, transfers between uh, chains, there are two main approaches uh, which bridges use on the market today. So, there is one approach that we're going to call relayers and oracles approach and the other approach, which we're going to call the light client approach. Uh, for example, uh, if we talk about relayers and oracles, probably, um, well, the, the most common names that pop up are AnySwap and multi-chain. And if we talk about light clients, um, then one of the probably most um, um, Pure, the purest example of the light client approach is rainbow bridge between NEAR and Ethereum ecosystem. Um, these approaches are not, um, let's say, uh, they have something in between. So these are two extremes of all the spectrum of approaches that one can take. And we're going to quickly take a look at the difference at how they, they operate, and then I'm going to show you how layer zero fits into this picture and why uh, we believe that um, up to date it's one of the best cross-chain 
uh, technologies uh, which can be used to build bridges. So um, let's first of all talk about uh, a very, like we we'll call it ordinary, uh, typical architecture, which is like relayers and oracles architecture. So if we have a bridge that um, needs to send liquidity from one blockchain to the other blockchain, um, the first and uh, the basic operation that any bridge is, is doing is uh, basically locking um, the liquidity, the tokens that you're going to send on a source chain. So the first thing that is being done is that the liquidity uh, is uh, locked on the source chain. And then um, this combination of relayers and oracles, uh, both of them are in, in the nutshell um, just the off-chain entities um, which are responsible for bridging tokens or in more general sense transactions. And here goes the, the probably the, the, the most important question. Um, these entities, relayers and oracles, um, can be either, either very centralized or to some extent decentralized. Um, today, most of the bridges, they implement um, a certain multi-party computation scheme uh, when relayers and oracles reach consensus um, on whether the transaction should be executed and the liquidity uh, from the source chain should be moved to the target chain. Um, let's say the degree of this decentralization varies. Um, to some extent, um, it can look very decentralized, but you never know um, who is actually operating these nodes. So most of the protocols try to make sure that um, the set of nodes, for instance, let's say in the case of multi-chain, there are 24 nodes, MPC nodes. Um, they are operated by different entities. Uh, it can be core development team. Uh, um, this can be major investors, um, ecosystem, um, stakeholders. So, but there are still like 24 entities that basically guarantee that um, the security of the bridge. And when these um, multi-party computation nodes reach consensus on on a transaction that a transaction from from a source chain should uh, be bridged. So let's say token transfer should be bridged to the target chain. Um, most of the bridges, they do two things. They either um, mint wrap token or they basically swap the token that you had um, locked previously on a source chain on the target chain. Um, these two things are, again, um, they can be used together. And in most cases, um, they are both utilized. So for instance, um, when we do wrap tokens, the bridge is minting the tokens that usually do not exist on the target chain. So let's imagine that on day one, uh, there won't be um, USDC available in Aptos, but there are you, there is there is a lot of there are a lot of networks um, with USDC. For instance, Ethereum has USDC, and whenever you bridge um, USDC from Ethereum to Aptos, uh, you basically uh, have no nothing to swap for. So there is no um, officially minted and officially uh, deployed USDC contracts on Aptos. So the only thing that a bridge can do in this case uh, is to basically release their own version. We could call it like a USDC, for instance, or pre prefixes with something. And that would be a wrap token. So let's say 90 percent of the bridges they do two things at the same time some of the bridges they focus in only on the native swaps um, but if native swaps are not available wrap tokens 
uh, the only option for a bridge. So that's the most typical architecture for the majority of the bridges. Uh, let's take a look at the pros and the cons of the architecture, of the relayers and Oracle architecture. So one of the strongest points um, of the relayers and Oracle's architecture, for instance, multi-chain, is that it's very straightforward to implement from scratch, uh, and it can make it very easy to add new chains to it. So you look to uh, the number of uh, different blockchains supported by multi-chain, and you compare it to, uh, let's say, um, the Rainbow Bridge, you're going to see that multi-chain is way ahead in the number of blockchains supported. And one of the reasons is that it's much, much easier uh, for them to add new blockchains. On the other hand, um, there is a problem which is obviously the need to trust these MPC nodes. Again, the, the degree of centralization may vary. So some protocols may actually reach a pretty decentralized and um, very secure uh, scheme of things that scheme of like the, the set of nodes would be um, pretty secure and um, lead to high uh, security of the bridge. But um, in many cases, uh, there is no way to guarantee that um, at some point in time, the nodes will like, never collude and um, never compromise the security of the bridge. So in terms of the trust, um, this relayers and oracles approach uh, requires more trust than we preferably should have in a bridge. So that's why the second approach is probably like one of the most interesting uh, and one of the most, um, let's say, promising when it comes to security. And again, security is a big thing in, in terms of the um, in terms of the hacks, the recent hacks and the, the amount of um, money stolen from the bridges. Um, they are definitely like number one um, among all the DeFi protocols. So the access landing protocols, um, they are not as, um, as vulnerable usually as bridges. Bridges are considered as one of the most vulnerable uh, places of the De DeFi ecosystem. So that's why we and every other developer um, of a bridge definitely put all priority to the security of the cross-chain uh, messaging and bridging. So that's why light client approach is something that definitely um, um, looks like a feature for the cross-chain. And the trick is that instead of trusting a set of nodes run by some third-party entities off-chain, we try to make sure that we trust just the chains themselves. So basically, the light client approach um, tries to make sure that the only two things we trust is the source and the block, the target blockchain security. So let's say if we tra transfer something from um, a token from Ethereum to Aptos, as long as we trust the security assumptions of Ethereum and as long as we trust the Aptos uh, to um, uh, work um, well and be secure, uh, we don't need to trust anything else. So that's the perfect world um, in which light clients should definitely like solve um, the security problem of the bridging and cross-chain messaging. And yeah, again, the pros are the probably highest level of security possible. And the cons of the light client is that they are tough to build. Um, what does it mean? Because light clients, uh, the whole word, the light clients, they, um, it implies that we have the blockchain clients that 
operate on other blockchains. So let's say we have an Ethereum virtual machine and we basically operate a client that verifies what, what is going on in Aptos. So it basically verifies Aptos transactions, Aptos states, Aptos proofs, and so on. And the other way around, if we have an endpoint in Aptos, it should be able to verify the block heaters, transaction proofs coming from Ethereum. And that's, first of all, not easy to build because, for instance, some of the cryptography on chain uh, is either not available or is extremely expensive to implement. So, like, Ethereum is notorious for its high gas costs, high gas prices. And uh, you can imagine that the, the full light client built on chain as a set of smart contracts would cost millions of dollars to run, which makes it practically not very feasible. So basically, the main goal of uh, layer zero is to, as we see it, and it's the main benefit that we see in layer zero, is that layer zero managed to get as close as possible to the light client um, verification of cross-chain transactions without um, compromising on practicality. So it's a practical, applicable protocol that can be run today. It's very close to being like full light client um, architecture. So um, why is it called layer zero? Because it provides something that goes even below the first layer, like Bitcoin, Ethereum, and the other chains. It gives the ability of um, different layers to communicate to each other. So um, it's important to um, emphasize that layer zero by itself is not a token bridge. So it, it's not built by itself to just serve the purpose of sending liquidity between blockchains. First of all, layer zero is a general protocol that is built to perform general messaging. So uh, if you compare it to the application level protocol, something long like HTTP, for instance, well known, um, if uh, a breach is an HTTP protocol, then layer zero is something that goes below something like TCP IP or something, a network level protocol. Um, yeah, so it can be used for building bridges. It can be used to build uh, other things as well. Let's take a look um, at the architecture of layer zero. So um, layer zero has two, has three basic um, ingredients. So first of all, both the source and the target chains here, let's call them chain A, chain B. Um, they have layer zero endpoints. So in the light of what we previously discussed, endpoints is um, the light client nodes. So layer zero calls them ultra light nodes and they are run on chain. Obviously as, uh, as, a, net, as, a, as a more low level protocol, uh, layer zero does not perform any application level functions. So that's why um, we need to have a user application which is deployed on chain A, chain B. These user applications would basically uh, utilize layer zero to perform cross-chain operations. And two off-chain entities that layer zero has to use, and again, um, there is no way to build um, any cross-chain messaging protocol without having something off-chain, obviously. So, um, are the Relayer and the Oracle. Um, and this is a very important thing here, that these two things should be independent, independently run. Let's take a look at what these uh, off-chain entities do and how the whole thing operates. So again, we have the source chain, the destination chain, two applications deployed, two endpoints, which verify the transactions on chain, 
and two off-chain entities, Relayer and Oracle, um, sending um, information between these two chains. So first of all, let's start with Oracles. Oracles perform a very simple function. Um, they deliver block headers from chain A to chain B. So basically, they, their goal is to uh, make sure that as soon as the block of transactions um, is confirmed, so for instance, if we talk about Ethereum, um, they're going to wait 18 blocks uh, for the final confirmation. If we, go, if we talk about Aptos, Aptos has instant finality, so um, there is no need to wait for such a long time. So as soon as um, the block is confirmed, the Oracle will deliver the block header, not the whole block with all the transactions, but that, just the header that can be used to um, verify that a certain transaction was included in this block. So basically, Oracles are just sending headers of the blocks to the destination chains. Um, on the practical side, so it's not just one Oracle. Um, it's something that you can imagine close, being close to chain link. So basically, um, a distributed set of oracles um, which come to consensus with the, with, in terms of the blocks um, produced and whether these blocks are finalized, they have enough confirmations, and send block headers to the target chain. Again, it's very important to notice here that uh, there is nothing about the transactions. So like sending coins, um, doing something else on the target chain. Oracles just handle the blocks. Blocks and their headers by themselves do nothing. So we need something else, something that is independent uh, and something that delivers the proof of transactions and transactions themselves. So we call this a relayer. Uh, a relayer basically is an off-chain server somewhere uh, that is monitoring the endpoint on chain A and delivering proofs of transactions and the payloads of transactions to chain B. And again, the main uh, idea is that um, it does only that. So it has nothing to do with the blocks, uh, with the headers, and with the fact that certain transaction has been included into a certain block. So it's just purely thing that's concerned with transactions. Um, Layer Zero runs their own Relayer service. But it's important to know that um, as a user application developer, you can configure your application to use your own Relayer. So let's say if you don't trust Layer Zero for some reason, and you want to make sure that you have your own Relayer, uh, that you operate yourself or is it is being operated by some entity you completely trust, then that's something that you definitely can do. So there is an option of having your own relayer here. And the most important thing that um, that is basically the light client approach, because right now we're talking about relayers and oracles, and we have probably like seen many other block, many other bridges. Um, using the same terms, and it still looks kind of the same as like the approach of the uh, more conventional architecture for bridging. So the best thing comes here on the endpoint where we have this light client node that basically verifies um, the transaction. That transaction proof that is being supplied by Relayer uh, has actually been included in the block provided by the Oracle. So, for instance, if we talk about Ethereum, that would be uh, a Merkley Patricia tree validation. Um, and this, in this case, the smart contract on chain is doing the validation, and only if the um, proof of the transaction is validated against the header of the block, um, the user application is being called by the endpoint. So again, um, the key security assumption and the key um, thing that every, everyone should, should understand in this, in this architecture is that um, the relayers and oracles 
are two different entities. So they must be independent of each other and you always have a chance to implement your own relayer. So if you implement your own relayer, you guarantee that they will never collude uh, with the oracles and they're going to never provide the fake transactions and fake heaters, uh, block heaters to the endpoint on chain B. Okay, so why have we chosen layer zero? Um, but first of all, like the security. Um, it's, to our knowledge, one of the most secure um, way of communication between uh, two blockchains. Um, moreover, Aptis and Sui uh, will have, will be connected to layer zero um, from the day one. So this is something that would be immediately available on both, on both chains. Layer zero is audited heavily, multiple times, but different companies. So again, um, the key thing in any cross-chain application, be it a bridge or something else, is security. So having strong uh, audit teams behind the protocol is definitely um, something that any developer should take into consideration. And uh, the final thing that we really love about Layer Zero is how they approach the uh, upgradability and immutability. So um, all the Layer Zero contracts are immutable. Um, and there are parts that can be upgraded. But if your application does not um, opt for this upgrade, so the upgrades are never forced. Um, if you don't opt for upgrade, you, you're going to still uh, function in perpetuity. Then nothing's going to stop you from um, nothing's going to stop your application from running and performing transactions. Uh, but if you feel that the upgraded version of the um, message protocol, for instance, uh, is like more gas efficient, let's say, or fix some security. Uh, potential security issues uh, if there are any, then you can opt and upgrade. But it's never forced upon you, which is great. I mean, immutability um, and upgradability are two uh, important things. And we believe that layer zero um, got the right balance here. OK, so um, let's take a look at some code. I'm going to show you a small um, contract, which will give you a taste of how layer zero um, can be used in an Aptis contract. And yeah, we're going to take a look at a very simple example. Uh, but the first thing that probably you're going to notice is that how easy um, it is to make your cross-chain enabled DAP uh, with layer zero. So we're going to take a look at a very small contract, which basically is a counter. So what it does, it takes, um, it creates a variable somewhere in the storage, and this variable can be incremented from the other blockchain. So this contract can be called from, let's say, Ethereum, and the, the stored variable would be the counter would be incremented. So um, it's actually pretty straightforward. We will have, uh, just give me a second. <laughs> yeah, so um, we're going to have a storage um, variable with one uh, integer that we're going to basically count and increment. As soon as we create the counter, yeah, so we initialize it and initially it will be zero. We're gonna need to configure our contract to accept remote calls. So what we're gonna do is basically we're gonna set, um, set the remote calls that would be accepted by by the contract. So we're going to add chain ID and we're going to add um, a remote address that 
would have a privilege to invoke our contract. Um, a chain ID is just a number, and the address here, um, it's um, a vector of bytes. Uh, we don't use the, the address that is like captive specific because this can be of any chain and the, the format of the address can be very different. So basically what we do is we call um, uh, the aptest libraries to um, add this contract as something that can call our contract. And obviously beforehand we need to like initialize the whole thing. We need to register uh, our user application. So um, whenever you're going to look at the docs of layer zero, you will frequently see this UA, which stands for user application. Um, this is something to uh, let the endpoint know about our contract on Aptis. So we tell layer zero, look, there is our contract. Um, we want to receive um, messages from the other blockchains. And here is how we do this. And here is how we say who is gonna, who's gonna be allowed to call us. Okay, so, um, yeah. Again, you can have your own app config. Um, what is this? So basically in app config, you can, it's, it's the place where you can uh, override the default um, the default relayer, for instance. So um, what you can do is you can run your own relayer to make sure that uh, there is no way relayers collide with oracles. And um, let's take a look, first of all, on receiving the, on the incoming messages. Um, whenever the contract from the other blockchain calls um, us, so what, it, what happens? The contract on, let's say, Ethereum um, calls the endpoint on Ethereum and passes all the required um, data to basically relay the transaction to Aptis. And here on the side of Aptis, we, um, by implementing the layer zero receive function, uh, we're going to receive the transaction from some outside chain. We're going to know the chain ID and we're going to know the, the sender of the transaction. So the source of the transaction. Um, how do we proceed? First of all, we um, need to make sure that um, we are called by the right entities. So we take the message from the endpoint whenever we are called, and then we uh, verify that it comes from a source, it comes from a trusted address. So the address that we um, trust, the address that we had previously added to the remotes. So the, func the function that I've shown you before uh, is the one where we configured the, the remotes and there we have to double check that um, it is the remote that we trust. And if it's not, we abort. Finally, when we are confident that we had received the relate transaction, the packet from the trusted party, we, we increment the counter um, in our contract. So, uh, in a similar way, uh, we can send transactions to remote contracts. So, um, it's basically uh, very similar um, in the sense that we take the remote that we've configured and we instruct the endpoint to deliver the payload, um, which can be arbitrary meaning that um, you can have any number of like parameters encoded there, um, the data that you want to send. And then we request these 
transfer to be executed. Okay, so as you see, it's pretty straightforward. The API is very clear, um, has very few things that you need to do manually. So basically the most probably important thing is not to forget to check your, um, that you trust the entities that you call, that you call and that are calling you basically. And the whole transaction takes, the whole contract takes, well, let's say 100 and something, 130 lines of code. And it gives you a fully implemented cross-chain um, application, which actually has um, one of the highest um, standards of security across all the possible ways you can practically build a cross-chain uh, communication. So this is the beauty of the layer zero, and that's why um, we uh, love to work with the technology and we are excited that we can um, connect Aptos to the EVM and layer zero now goes, now goes to some non-EVM chains such as Solana um, with the help of um, with the help of layer zero. Yeah. So again, that would be like a very small example. Um, real life examples are a bit more involved. Um, but again, um, the underlying um, API, the underlying flow of calls of execution flow is pretty much similar. Okay, so um, I hope this gave you a small taste of how, um, yeah, how a contract, a cross-chain enabled contract might look like uh, on Aptos um, if you go with layer zero as your messaging protocol. Okay, so um, let's probably get back to and let me tell you a bit about what we do and how we use layer zero in our application obviously as a bridge um secure communication is like one of the most important thing that we need and right now um as an application level protocol again layer zero is about like communication sending messages receiving messages and making sure that everything is secure um, we develop a hybrid approach. So what we do is we utilize layer zero, whatever is possible, because we believe that's one of the best approaches um, any bridge can basically use today in the market. But also um, we work on running our own multi-party computation nodes to make sure that we connect, um, we are able to expand and connect the chains that are not currently supported by layer zero. Um, this comes from the overall uh, like vision and like strategic goal that we have. Um, our top priority, our um, main driving force is that, of, is that we believe that there are many um, chains coming, many new chains uh, with interesting architectures uh, with um, new uh, execution layers uh, with new storage solutions, for instance. And we want, we want to make sure that we can expand uh, rapidly. So um, as a development team, we, we're going to utilize layer zero whenever it is available and wherever it is supported. But at the same time, uh, to make sure that we can uh, advance fast as fast as possible. Um, so one of the reasons we called Mover because we want to move as fast as possible to the new chains that we find exciting. Uh, we also gonna run our own nodes and connect the chains that are not currently supported by layer zero um, with our own MPC nodes. So this gives us um, a hybrid architecture. So on one hand, um, we have layer zero and it's light client approach and on the other hand we have um, the secure multi-party computation and the consensus it gives us uh, on the chains that are not yet supported 
But again, the strategic vision is that at some point in time, we hope that um, we definitely would be able to completely switch to light client approach as we believe it's like more superior, definitely in terms of the security. Okay, so um, again, what does it give us as developers on Aptis? Um, we really enjoy the security of layer zero. And even with layer zero being just in early stages on Aptis, I mean, Aptis has no mainnet, uh, layer zero has no public release of, um, of their code for Aptis, but we actually find that the whole um, code base that we need to work with is very, um, very professional. So it, 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 is, it is easy to read, it is easy to um, um, integrate. So we really enjoy working with layer zero um, API. So that's um, basically our experience so far with layer zero. And we hope that the more chains layer zero would add, um, the, the more we're gonna stick to their approach because this is something um, that, I mean, has truly um, a lot of potential in terms of being the most secure approach. And um, as a development team, um, I mean, on the, Dark, darker side of thing, um, because we've decided to have this hybrid approach. We have a bit more work than usually uh, people should expect to uh, have in this kind of project. But again, um, we believe that it is um, justified from the standpoint of that we are a tech-driven company, a tech-driven team, and there are many, many, um, upcoming um, new L1, L2 chains um, that we would love to uh, cross chain with. And the ability to move fast, the ability to um, kind of be on the bleeding edge of things that happen um, is very important for us. So yeah, we have to do a bit more work, but um, that's what we love. Uh, and that's why we we stick to the approach we use okay um yeah i'm gonna be available for the questions and um thanks for everybody uh thanks for everybody for 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 listening uh, i hope that you find something useful uh and learn something about like our experience and um at least learn that Cross-chain isn't that tough, and with the help of Layer Zero, um, your Raptus um, application can really cross the the bridges uh, and connect different chains, which we believe is important and is the concept that in the future would play an increasingly important role. Um, if there um, there will appear any questions, feel free to reach us on Twitter, on Discord, anywhere we are. Um, we really love to talk to people who uh, enjoy Aptis as we do. And yeah, thanks for, um, for having me. And yeah, good luck everybody on the hackathon. And yeah, hope that you're gonna have some great time. Take care, bye-bye.